Hi everyone, welcome to this week's um, edition of our Hero Beauty Products and this week is a slightly different uh, take on beauty products I guess and we're joined by Lauren who is a nutritionist. Um, Lauren is called the Foodie Nutritionist on Instagram and um, she also looks at retreats and she'll tell us all about what she does herself which is does a wide variety of things but the focus for our chat this evening is going to be rather than on beauty products and make makeup products that you put on your face or your skin we're talking about food and nutrients so the feeding the skin from within or the goodness that you can give your um, skin and your hair and your nails actually from within. Um, yeah. And as always, um, if anybody has any comments, any questions, because there might be with the things that we're talking about particularly today, if it's during it, um, pop up a question, I'll see it, I'll throw them over Lauren's way and hopefully she'll be able to answer them. If it's after us, leave a comment and we'll keep an eye on any comments that come in over the next few days and answer if we can. Um, Lauren, maybe before we start, because, and this is a theme that's like, I think you're going to be the third person that's going to say that you're an accountant <laughs> before you started to do what you did now, yeah. So you started off as an accountant. Yeah, so I worked as an accountant for over a decade. Um, and I suppose I got introduced to nutrition because I I was having a lot of health problems myself. I kind of, I had a lot of problems with IBS. I eventually kind of discovered I had endometriosis so that kind of led me into the world of nutrition and I retrained as a nutritional therapist I suppose I never really thought I was actually um, I work kind of full-time as a nutritionist now so I mostly work with women who have endometriosis um, and other kind of hormonal problems um, and I also organize um, a women's wellness retreat. So I kind of, I very much think like nutrition is a massive part of wellness, but it's not like the entire picture that we really need to be looking at other areas of our life. So the retreat's really, really based around trying to kind of help you make improvements in your life in a kind of more holistic way. Okay. And speaking of retreats, we um, have one coming up just the week after next. Yeah, so we have a retreat. It's going to be in Loch Crew in County Mead. So it's about an hour and a little bit outside uh, County Mead. And um, it's on the 12th to the 14th of October. And we still have a couple of spots left. So if people want to have a look at it, it's on um, www.thereset.me. Perfect. And I'll link it so people can yeah. access it if they want it. Brilliant. Um, and Laura, maybe just before we move on, it might be helpful to give a little idea of what kind of things you do on the retreat. So as you mentioned, it's about wellness, it's about like your focus is very much on nutrition. If people are there for yeah. weekends, what kind of things are they going to be getting up to or what is going to be your time spent on? Um, so I suppose we cover lots of different areas. So we um, do um, some kind of gentle movements, so yoga and Pilates. We also do kind of a really nice walk in the countryside. We do... Uh, particular workshops so there are workshops that people have told us that they like their problems that particular like women have told us they have problems with so one is all about how to improve your relationship with food one is how to be less stressed and more organized and then we concentrate a lot on like goal setting so we look at like where are you right now and where would you like to go and we help people kind of make changes in the right directions great so, so it's quite uh, all encompassing i suppose yeah it sounds brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we really enjoy running it and we got great feedback from the June one. So we're really looking forward to the the next one. Brilliant. Perfect. I'll link it so people can check it out. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, so will we kick off? So what we were going to talk about today is, as I mentioned, nutrients and food and how you know we get benefits from them. And that we were going to focus on three main areas. Um skin hair and nails and originally we had talked about like how we were going to do it and you had mentioned Lauren that a lot of the food or the nutrients that are good say for your skin are beneficial for your hair and your nails as well so we're kind of putting it all in together <laughs> and, and talking about nutrients in general and food and how you can absorb these nutrients and where you get them from yeah and I suppose um for me like I even before I would have been really into like you know what's the newest product what's the nicest looking thing on the shelf and like I still am and I absolutely love skincare and I love makeup and all those things but I really do believe that you know you have to nourish from within because you're never gonna get the you're never gonna achieve perfect skin or perfect nails or anything like that if you don't really nourish yourself from within because that's really fundamentally what's feeding your cells and feeding you from the inside so I just think it's a really really important thing I don't know how you feel about food and nutrition and the role it plays in beauty 
Ozma was Ozma like, was like, sorry, there's just a little sorry, bit. Sorry, there's just a little bit. And oh, yeah. I, I want to say that, like, if you have a weekend that you're out all weekend and you take away or, you know, crisps or junk, you see it on your skin first thing. First thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's, it's amazing so you get it's, instant feedback that way. And it doesn't matter what you put on your skin then. Your skin's still going to look quite, you know, grey and you'll have that kind of washed out look. And it takes, and like, it takes like, 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 you might spend like one you might day out, 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 you know, whatever it might be. But then if you could have spots or breakouts or redness, feel like redness for a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I suppose... Um, the first thing I would say when it comes to, and this is kind of all encompassing when it comes to like your skin, your hair, your nails, is the importance of protein. And a lot of time we, when we talk about kind of nutrition and beauty, we kind of think about the like micro the micronutrients, the minerals, the minerals, minerals, the protein, the protein is really the thing, thing that we need to look at. Because we forget. Sorry, Feedback. Feedback. Oh, I can get it from your side now as well. Oh. So I'm well, just going to hit refresh here and hopefully that will sort it out. Okay, I think that's going to be better. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, sorry about that. And sorry, whoever's watching, apologies for that. You were saying um, protein. Yeah, so protein. I, I, suppose, like, we, I always think like certain macronutrients go through certain kind of fashions. So when I was growing up, carbohydrates were really in fashion. And now like protein is really in fashion. And people are always talking about it. And they're always like, if you go to the gym and if you want to build muscle, or if you want to tone up, we're talking about protein. But we kind of forget that it's our hair, skin and nails, they're all made from protein. So if we're going to the gym, we want to build muscle, we want to do all these things, and we want, also want to have amazing skin, hair and nails, we need to be make, making sure that we're actually eating enough protein. Um, and I find this a lot with women, especially like women that I work with, that I look at their food diaries and they won't really be eating enough protein. They, they, they quite possibly think that they are. And also a lot of the time, the quality of the protein in the diet isn't great. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of like protein and the amount of protein you should be eating, um, the recommendation is you should be eating in around about 0 0.75 grams to one gram per kilogram body weight. Um, and that kind of just means nothing. So I always try and make it a little bit more, you know, um, I suppose applicable to real life so say for example you are 10 stone you would need and that's about 65 uh, kilograms so you need in around about 65 grams of protein just normally every day without you know any if you weren't even go to the gym or anything like that that's just what you normally need and you're talking sorry yeah go on. No, I was just gonna say my head is frankly trying to do maths so 65 <laughs> grams of protein like how, how big is that is that like a salmon, a darn a salmon, or is it like a chicken breast or? Um, so uh, like a chicken breast is in around kind of like 20 grams. And it now obviously depends on the size. Like the size of a chicken breast can like vary a lot. Sometimes you see tiny little ones and sometimes they're really pumped up. Yeah. So it depends on the size. Um, and say like an egg is in around about 13 grams. And about like, say a half tin of chickpeas is in around between like eight, eight and nine grams. So you can see, you know, if you were just kind of getting a moderate amount of protein with like your uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, you'll get small amounts of protein and other things as well. Um, but you do really need to be making sure that you're getting a decent portion of protein with your breakfast, lunch and dinner. And with women, that doesn't always happen. Like we have a tendency to reach for the toast or reach for the cereal. Like a lot of time, for, even if you're eating something really healthy, so like you know, uh, a pure like millennial breakfast is avocado toast, yeah. which is breakfast, but there's no, there's literally no protein in it at all. So um, it's just really, really important to be making sure that you're actually getting enough protein. That's the, the first thing. And are some sources of protein like better or, you know, like what will be kind of the recommended source of protein for people? 
Yeah, so like diversity is really, really, really important. So you want to be making sure that you're going for your plant-based and your non-plant-based sources. So um, things like eggs, like salmon, white fish is really good. Um, your any your lentils, your pulses, your chickpeas, all of that stuff is really, really good. So um Collagen and elastin are like really, really important in skin support and skin health. And they're made out of amino acids, which are protein. And some of those amino acids, we naturally produce ourselves and other, others we have to get from our diet. So that's why it's really, really, really important to make sure that you're getting as many varied protein sources as possible. Okay, so then the ones that you're saying that we have to get from our diet, what kind of foods would we get? Like, is it are, are certain protein heavy foods better for those, or is it just protein in general? Um, so there's a I suppose, like, um, even though I know there's probably some people who will be watching this and they might not be meat eaters, I know we had Holly on last week, so you might have vegans and vegetarians watching, watching the lives. Um, but generally kind of meat sources are good and they're high in glycine. Glycine is one of the amino acids that make up um your uh elastin and your collagen and yeah. um, and things like bone broth as well can be really really good so i don't know if anybody has ever used bone broth but it can be quite good to help you boost collagen and elastin okay i wish that had a different name <laughs> everybody always says how good it is but like bone broth oh <laughs> good though and it's really nice coming into winter as well because you know if you want a snack or something it can be quite nice because it's warm and it feels quite nourishing and everything um, and Sadie's Kitchen does a lovely one and she does one now and it's kind of mixed with greens so you're getting like your greens and your bone broth together so that can be quite nice. And can you just pick that up in the supermarket? Yeah 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 so I think um, Super Value do it I know Morton's do it kind of you know like the more kind of high-end kind of supermarkets they do it as well but it's actually easy to make bone broth as well like if you're roasting a chicken you can it's always better to get like an organic or a free-range chicken and there's plenty of recipes online that you can make your own bone, bone broth. I know not everyone has the time but it is possible. <laughs> But it's one of those things that you always like, oh, yeah, that looks like I should really do it. But really, like if you roast a chicken, I think that's pretty good um, effort for the day, isn't it? OK, so we need to have um, protein. And from the science, but to get enough protein, we're probably going to need to have proper protein in every meal. So maybe like could you give us um, like a suggestion of what would be like a good breakfast to kick off the day that would have good like protein in it? Yeah, um, so eggs really are the best kind of form of uh, protein to get in first thing in the morning. Like, or if you want, you can go for porridge, but you need to be making sure that you're adding things to your porridge. So adding like nuts and seeds and um, you can add a protein powder. I do like protein powders Um, just I try and go for one that isn't too processed. So generally vegan and vegetarian protein powders have less ingredients and um, so they are a little, little bit less processed. Um, yeah, so nuts, seeds, eggs, um, and protein powder, Greek yogurt is good as well. And they're all good sources of protein for breakfast. And um, for lunch, I always kind of try and make some sort of like a butter bowl effort. And I'll often kind of use um, like the plate kind of method to put, a get, put together my meals at lunch and dinner. And basically that means, so for protein, you really want to be putting together so like in around like a portion of protein is about the size of the, the size of the of your palm. Okay. And then the rest of the plate, really what I'm aiming to do is put, you know, really, really good colours. So like loads and loads of different coloured vegetables and some starchy carbs. So you're talking about your brown rice or brown pasta or your quinoa or any of your exotic grains. And then a little bit of fat as well, just to make sure that you're getting some good healthy fats. And usually I kind of base my lunches and dinners in that way. And um, okay. so kind of some version of that, like not always, uh, like you know, sometimes you're eating out or whatever. That's not going to be possible. But for the most part, that's kind of the way that I eat, and you can you can be sure then that you're getting a decent amount of protein in. Okay, so it sounds like you don't do kind of the traditional like lunch where you might have soup or a salad. You take and you know people at dinner then will probably have like their protein and I don't know rice and veg or whatever it might be. You kind of take that approach to lunch as well. Yeah, because I just find it's a lot easier to be able to get in um, veg. Like, because if you're trying to get in a minimum of five vegetables a day, and I'll talk about antioxidants a bit as well, um, it's really difficult if you're kind of, you know, you haven't had any at breakfast, you haven't had any at lunch, and then you're really trying to catch up at dinner time. 
and it can feel quite overwhelming I think if you're like oh god I need to get in all my vegetables at dinner time it can be quite hard so it's good to try and you know go back and try and see can you even get one in at, at breakfast time one in at lunch time Okay, perfect. Um, Lauren, we have a couple of viewers from the families on both sides. Cara has joined us. Um, oh, um, so you're both very welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so that was the first um, first like essential that we need for our beauty and our skin protein. Um, yep. And what would be your second then go to must have? Um, so my second is um, like antioxidants. So like people talk about antioxidants a lot, but I don't think people actually really know what they are. It's like this word that's bandied around. And I think you hear it a lot in terms of skincare as well, that antioxidant creams and serums and potions. And, and so um, I just like, I'm just gonna step back a little bit and kind of explain what an antioxidant actually is. So I kind of like to use like little stories to be able to explain stuff. So we're at the end of the summer. So as we're coming into autumn, and everyone probably has a barbecue or you're probably like, where are you going? <laughs> but everyone has like a barbecue or like a summer chair or something like flung outside. And in a couple of weeks or months or whatever, you might find it might start getting a little bit of rust. So okay. that's a normal, normal process. It's when something is outside, it's exposed to oxygen and then it gets damaged. So it gets that rust and that's basically the process of oxidization that's causing free radical damage. And that happens in our body. So this process is going on all the time in our body. Um, and we've got things going around trying to fix things all the time. So we get free radical damage and antioxidants are what help to clean up this free radical damage. Does that make okay. sense? Makes perfect sense because none of us want to be rusty, right? No, exactly. And that like, contributes to things like aging. So it's really free radical damage that's what's causing aging is that we, we're getting damage inside our body and it's damaging our skin. Okay. Um, so what we really need to be doing is trying to include as many antioxidants in our diet as possible. And I suppose I could easily just say to you, you need to eat more fruit and veg, but you'll just go, I know that already. So if I <laughs> If you don't eat enough fruit and veg, it's going to age your skin. Well, you'll remember a little bit better. Yeah. So we just need to be including as many like brightly colored fruit and vegetables into our diet as possible. It's a very, very simple thing, but it's something that we just need to do a lot more of. And are there any um, fruit or veg that are particularly, I don't know, just say high in antioxidants or particularly good at antioxidants? Um, so antioxidants, so vitamins, a, C, and E are the real ones that we need to be including. So okay. when you're thinking about A, C, and E, you're really just thinking about anything that's brightly colored. So you're talking about yellow, orange, green are things that you need to be looking at. Okay. Um, blueberries, are they high in antioxidants? <laughs> <laughs> sugar, they're low in sugar as well which is great because oh, okay. they kind of will take a little bit off the sweet tooth but they're high in antioxidants as well yeah. okay okay perfect well that because they're easy things like that that you can pop in the fridge and yeah. you know those kind of, it's kind of easy options that you want isn't it yeah exactly yeah okay perfect okay so we're gonna um eat plenty of protein with each of our meals antioxidants so loads of brightly colored fruit and veg um, what's the next thing, Lauren, that we need to make sure we include in our diet? Um, so the, this isn't really an include in your diet. This is actually a don't. So oh. I know, like, I'm sure we all know that like yo-yo dieting is not good for us, mm -hmm. but it's something I think that we as women kind of feel compelled to do every so often if we're going on a holiday or if we have like a special occasion coming up. But when you think about it, I suppose the skin on your face is just exactly the same as the skin in your body. And, you know, radically losing weight and putting on weight, weight very quickly or it's, it's going to cause our skin to sag. So it's not really something that we think about too much when we're thinking about um, beauty, I suppose, and nutrition and when it comes to skin, hair and nails. But if we are kind of losing weight and putting on weight very quickly, our skin's going to sag. It's not going to look good. Okay. So it's just an important thing to remember when you're kind of considering diets and just having an overall kind of healthy balanced diet overall so then if you if somebody does want to lose weight and they lose weight a kind of slower and more gradually 
would that like have less of an impact on I guess your skin or your face than it would be if you maybe you know went all out and lost a lot of weight in a short space of time yeah absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. because it's just if it's something that's done gradually over time you're not gonna you know lose that kind of physical integrity in your skin okay for a very quick space of time that's really interesting I never thought about that before yeah, because it's not something. Because when you think about yo-yo dieting, you don't think about it on the impact of on your skin, but yeah. it, it has to impact on your skin. Okay, okay, that's mad. Okay, brilliant. Okay, um, do you have um um anything else that we should be looking out for? Um, well, the last thing I say was just it's just to do with like water. So, like obviously, water is just incredibly important. And um, people kind of always ask, they're like, "How much water do I need to drink?" And I would always say, um just like monitor the color of your urine is the easiest way to be able to tell how much you need so it should be like a pale kind of straw color and that's what you should be aiming for and I know we're coming into the winter months now it can be really 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 difficult to try and get more water and I know even the last couple of days I found it kind of more difficult to drink water so go for alternatives like try your herbal teas try like green tea has caffeine in it but most other herbal teas don't have any caffeine in them so try and experiment with different things because there's loads of really 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 lovely herbal teas out there now like Pukka do some really 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 nice blends yeah Um, and also like eat kind of your water so like if you're getting in lots and lots of antioxidants you're also going to be getting in lots and lots of water so just try and get it through your diet as well as just drinking it so Lauren, if we were to have um like you know make the ideal meal or dinner this evening for our skin and our general well being to give us good nails and hair, what would be like uh, and your favourites obviously because like you're the one that's going to suggest this, but like you're making the perfect dinner like well balanced, healthy, nutritious, all the rest. What are we going to have? Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> I sw- well, I, like I just had my dinner there and it's usually kind of some version of the same thing. So I had um, salmon and I, um, so salmon obviously is your healthy fat. Um, healthy fats are really anti-inflammatory. So they can be really, really good for people who have skin conditions. So things like eczema, psoriasis, they can be really, really good to include. Um, and I just, I kind of made a little bit of a breadcrumb I, with, oats and I put some um smoked paprika on it because I love smoked paprika and it just makes it a little bit more interesting and palatable like sometimes salmon you're just like oh I don't want salmon again yeah, so just, yeah. you can make a really nice like kind of breadcrumbs with oats is that like if you want to instead of bread if you don't want wheat or anything and okay. um, I had I just steamed some vegetables um and I had some sweet potato and that was really it it's really 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 boring but it it works and it's that version of a plate that works really well that you have your starchy carbs so you have your sweet potato you've got your micronutrients and your antioxidants coming through with um your vegetables and then you've got your good healthy fat and protein source and is there um a number like what how many times a week would you have fish for your dinner say or lunch or whatever it might be but how many times a week would you have fish so you really want to be aiming to have fish oily fish um two to three times a week okay um um, there's been new guidelines this week so tuna used to be classified as an oily fish but it's no longer classified as an oily fish so it's really things like salmon mackerel sardines that you want to be looking at okay and twice a week yeah two to three times okay okay like that that's doable (laughs) you only think of all the meals that you have in a week you only think about breakfast lunch and dinner twice a week is not um isn't that many yeah perfect okay breakfast time is an easy time to get it in as well yeah and like when you like just smoke salmon count as salmon salmon fish yeah Yeah, like when you think about all those options you're flying it really yeah exactly Perfect. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. Um, really, really appreciate it. Best of luck with your retreat. I'm sure it'd be fabulous. Um, I, as I said, I'll link it um, to the description so people can go in and check it out. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, and we'll see you back here again next week, hopefully. Thanks so much, Lauren. No worries. Thanks.